Hello, everybody. Uh, as you probably already know, my name is Barbara, and I'm Zoe's colleague, actually. And today I will tell you a bit about recombinant self-free expression system, most more commonly known as pure system. So, Zoe told you a lot about lysate uh, and how to prepare them. Uh, in comparison to lysate, pure system is prepared by purifying separately many different proteins and then assembling them together to form the self-free expression system. The advantage of using such a system is that they are very well defined and can be easily adjustable, which is not the case of lysate. However, it means that you will probably need to spend more time preparing the system and the preparation cost might be higher. Um, so what is pure system? So pure system is basically the core transcription translation machinery you would use also in case of lysate, but the other stuff are gone. Uh, it's basically composed of 36 proteins, ribosomes, and then as in case of lysate, some small molecules, energy, and buffer. We can look at the system in case of four subunits. So we have amino acylation, where your tRNA is attached to its amino acid. This requires ATP as energy. Then we have transcription. Uh, usually, most commonly used is T7 RNA polymerase, but other polymerase is very used in the pure system. Uh, then we have transcript, translation, uh, where ribosomes and translation factors uh, use mRNA to produce the protein. This requires GTP as energy. GTP and ATP can be then regenerated. Uh, in pure, it's creatine phosphate, the energy stores used. Uh, so how can you prepare such a system? So what you will need to have is your proteins, your ribosomes, and your energy solution. So the common way how to prepare a pure is to do 36 histac purification and then assemble your system. We recently developed a method which avoids doing 36 purifications but allows you to prepare all the proteins in just one purification. Uh, I will tell you more about it in just a minute. Here is a, sorry, here is a list of protocols I used for preparation of pure systems. So this is a really nice protocol from OEDA, uh, from the original pure. Uh, then this is our one pot pure system. I, if you decide to use or do such a protocol, I really recommend to look for supplementary information. There is lots of notes. And then last but not least, uh, last year, iGEM team from EPFL did a really nice protocol. They did some videos. So again, if you decide to go with one pot pure, I highly recommend checking their website. I also attach to edging sources where you can see all the vectors you will need to synthesize your proteins. So let's look more closely on preparation of different parts. So let's start with the proteins. So if you do the, as I said, the classical way, you define the composition in the end. This makes it very simple, you just mix things, you can omit stuff, you can adjust stuff, it's super easy to change. And if you decide to go with one pot pure with single purification, you need to define the composition at the beginning. So how you do this one system is that you combine all your strains at the beginning and then do one culture and one polyrification. By changing the ratio of the strains you add 
to the system, you can adjust the final yield of the protein. This is of course not as precise as mixing the proteins in the end, but luckily pure system is relatively robust and it sh shows that one of the most important proteins is elongation factor Q. Uh, this is also the most abundant, one of the most abundant protein in E. coli. So you don't need to have such a such a grasp on the concentration of all the other proteins. You just have to make sure that you have sufficient concentration of the elongation factor TU. So as you can see by doing single purification here, the one plot, we were able to relatively reproduce the mixing of the proteins after the purification. If, uh, you decide to do such a system, you are doing a classical histac purification. I will not go much into detail. You will have a nice seminar about protein purifications and so on in upcoming weeks. But what I wanted to point out here is, as one more time, was the mixing of the cultures. So you have 36 overnight cultures and you mix them in only one culture and then you express all your proteins. Again, as Zoe was saying, for lysis, we are using sonication. That's really, really nice method. I also have a good experience with it. But if you don't, you can use different lysis methods. Uh, the last thing I wanted to point out was that we use for our protocol buffer exchange instead of dialysis. These are basically exchange it's easy to exchange these two things. So if you don't want to do dialysis, you could do buffer exchange. If you don't want to do buffer exchange, you can do dialysis. This is not just in case of one pot, but in general for protein purification. Uh, what I wanted to focus on for you is strain preparation, because this is really important. If you want to have a good pure system, you have to have good strains you will purify from. So if you have your vectors, you have to make sure you have your correct strain because not all vectors or plasmids are compatible with all strains. So this is in general a good idea. Anytime you have a new plasmid or new vector you don't know, check with which strains you can use the vector. So after you confirm you transform your plasmid, I recommend doing expression tests. This is again not just in case of pure, but in case of all expression. You can do very small cultures, you can just induce them and then mixing very small amount of culture with lemmy buffer and then directly after heating up loading it to a gel and you can see that you will immediately see if your protein is expressing. This is not any purification. This is just cell lysate loaded, but you can just lyse the cells with lemon. This is a really nice approach in general. And last but not least, you should always make sure that your cells have good conditions to grow. Uh, most important for, especially for E. coli, is oxygen. So use brief easy membranes on the plates or high rotation and small volumes in big flask or buffer flask to really make sure you get lots of oxygenation for the culture. Then I put here a slide for people who are considering using a pure system. Uh, they are basically three things you can do. You can use a commercial system, which is really nice. It's easy to use, it's pre-prepared, but it's quite expensive and you cannot really adjust it too much. Uh, I don't think uh, for iGEM it is a great idea to go with a single component preparation and it's lots of work. Uh, but in general, this is the best system if you want to adjust or 
check components and play with the system in general. If you decide to go with single purification, this is cheap and it's easy to prepare, but it's not as easy to adjust as in the case of the single components. Of course, you cannot just prepare your proteins, you also have to prepare your ribosomes and your energy solution. So first a bit about ribosomes. So in case of ribosome purification, you do not overexpress your ribosomes. You are just isolating already present ribosomes. So most commonly used is A19 strain. This is also strain which used to be used for lysate preparation, it's uh, RNA is deficient, but you can get ribosomes from any E. coli. Uh, the most common method is ultra centrifugation through cushion, sucrose cushion. You can see it's really reproducible protocol. This is how ribosome look uh, on page gel after purification. But of course, not everybody has, uh, especially I would say in iGEM, access to ultra centrifugation. So I also added HISTAC ribosome protocol here, uh, which can be done only through simple gravity field purification. But unfortunately, we didn't see that these ribosomes are as productive as the sucrose cushion one but still uh, it's good to consider them. Again, you are not overexpressing them. You, are, you have just the uh, his tag on one of the proteins of ribosomes in the genomic DNA. Uh, here is a summary for both of the purification. So the histac purification is classical histac purification. Again, I will not talk about it in detail. For the sucrose cushion, there is, you have to do first hydrophobic interaction purification, and then you follow with ultra centrifugation through cushion. So this is the sucrose cushion. And then while you're spinning, you will deposit your ribosomes on the bottom. But there are really nice protocols, a lot of different protocols for this method. Last but not least, uh, the energy solution. So I will not go too much into details, but what I consider important is to think of the final pH of your solution. You should make sure you do not get different pH than seven. So use NTPs which are buffered. Um, in general, energy solution for a pure is simpler than from light for a lysate, but it's very similar. And then one more, two more things I wanted to mention is if you are using tRNAs, make sure that you are not introducing RNAs into your bottle or into your RNAs. So we usually directly add water to the bottle to avoid any vaping and introducing RNAs. Uh, and then last but not least, this is not often mentioned, but cell free system in general are relatively sensitive to ion concentrations. So I highly recommend using volumetric flask and be really precise when you are preparing your buffers and salts especially in case of magnesium, because this might influence your reactions a lot. And then how you test your system when you prepare it. So Zoe talked a bit or showed you a bit of data from a plate data, which is a fluorescent readout. As she said, it gives you a kinetic a readout pure in general is much faster than lysate, so usually you saturate your reaction around two hours. Um, in pure, we also use a linear template. The advantage compared to lysate is that you don't have any DNAs, so you don't need to protect your uh, DNA. Again, 
as Zoe said, you can also use plasmid um, if you have, but you don't need to. You can do just extension PCR to your given protein you want to express. And um, what's and if we look at the, the graph on the bottom, you can see that pure system is highly sensitive to a temperature. So the optimal temperature is around 37 degrees. And then if you start decreasing the temperature of incubation, you can see quite big drop. This is not as common for lysate. In lysate, you usually see a bit more possibility. You have a bit more possibility to choose at different temperatures. Uh, I know that lots of people don't, or lots of labs don't own a plate reader. So you can also use a calorimetric detection. Uh, for two examples are trialase and beta-galaxidase enzyme. You can also do gels. We like to use fluorescently labeled uh, tRNA, which gives you a really good indication of what you are expressing. You can also say from coma cysteine gel, but it's not as easy as you can see. The pure gives you lots of background. This is even worse for a lysate. Uh, I would like to finish with two slides about important things to consider. So first, you should pay attention uh, things you should pay attention to if you are preparing such a system or if you are using it. So as I said, the pure system is relatively uh, requires lots of elongation factor to you, and it's also relatively sensitive to ribosome concentration. Here you make you should make sure that you are not overshooting the concentration. So you have to find an optimal, which we found, uh, yeah. Uh, and then also, I already mentioned it, salts are really important. Magnesium is important for ribosome function. If you add too much magnesium or too little, your system will eventually stop working. And I'm, in, I'm mentioning it also because I think lots of people add some additional stuff to the reactions. And you should always consider the fact that adding more things might bind your magnesium ions. And that means that you might dump your reaction or the opposite, you might be intro, induce, introducing a new or a higher concentration of magnesium ion. And again, this can kill your reaction. And then last but not least, uh, use uh, redox reagents which are fresh. We like to use TSEP, but beta mercapto or DTT is also fine. Just don't use DTT for histac purification. And last slide. Uh, Pure, as you saw, is just the core transcription translation machinery. So it doesn't contain any chaperones. So sometimes you have to add chaperones to help the proteins fold. This is not always the case. You can see like GFP, lots of proteins can be folded without adding the chaperones, but some more complex proteins, aggregation prone proteins will require this. If you are expressing membrane proteins, you will need to add vesicles to help fold the proteins. And if you are doing some mammalian proteins or some specific proteins which require disulfide bonds, you might need to change the conditions of the reaction to oxidizing to actually properly form the disulfide bonds. So just something you should consider. So yeah, thank you a lot for your attention and good luck to all of you with your experiments and projects. All right, thank you, Barbara. Um, do we have any questions? I don't think oh, so. Wait a bit. I think we're good. Does anyone have a question? How to make the one pot pure system that Barbara just described? 
Okay, no questions. So I think we can end here. Uh, thank you again, all of you for um, being here, um, for your attention. Uh, and I wish you a very good summer, a very good project, productive summer, uh, and good luck for the item competition. Thank you all. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you, Barbara. Goodbye.